salad and we'll be serving dinner pretty soon. And Brother um, Saifala will come up and give us the open prayer. I saw a lady. Dear believers, we seek refuge with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, high and glorified is he. We seek refuge with him from the Satan, from the Shaitan, the accursed enemy. Who Allah guides, he is on true guidance without doubt. And who he does not guide, or who he does not take as a protector, you will never find any protector or guide. We give open testimony that there is nothing worthy of worship except God, Allah, and we give open testimony that Muhammad, the praise and peace be upon him, is the seal of the message. We ask blessings upon the family of Muhammad. We ask blessings upon the generation that came after the Sahaba. And we ask blessings on all of us here this evening until the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. Dear believers, I greet you with the greetings of peace from all the prophets from Adam to Muhammad. The greetings of Assalamu Alaikum. <laughs> At first, in this welcome, I would like to welcome you to the historic Masjid Wali Muhammad. My name is Tawheed Rashad, uh, newly installed Imam. And I just want to welcome you and show appreciation for your coming out, supporting the historic Masjid Wali Muhammad fundraiser. And to bring to attention to all of us that when we support these fundraisers, brothers and sisters, we are, ah, a little lettuce going on in there. <laughs> but when we support these fundraisers, brothers and sisters, we are supporting ourselves. We're supporting ourselves and this is an excellent picture of cooperative economics, giving us a sign of where we can go when we all join in and support an effort. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, may Allah forgive him his sins, he showed us how this can be done and what can be done with a small amount of believers coming together collectively to achieve a goal, achieve a purpose. And as I said the other day about, we just uh, saw President Obama leave office, okay? And uh, many 
in the African American community are still waiting for something to happen or to, to, to a claim of success from that administration. Even though the President Obama, he did many things in our community, it's still on us. It's still on us to change our condition because he's gone. And uh, if we haven't got the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for collective uh, work and togetherness, we should have it now. We surely should have it now. So, Masjid Wali Muhammad, this fundraiser, as you know, is a buildup to our largest fundraiser of the year, the Black Tie fundraiser, which happens in March. And I pray all of you have gotten your tickets. And uh, so we hope that you have enjoyed all of the EMAM homecoming events that we've had. Most of us have showed up for every one, and we appreciate that. And so this is the last, if I'm not, if I'm correct, is this the last before the, the largest one? Yes. Okay. The big, the big black tie. When we get a chance to put on our tuxes and our evening gowns and our furs and our crops, we get a chance to put on all of that and show our best, inshallah. So we have hope of enriching and reestablishing and renewing and reinvigorating historic Masjid Wali Muhammad. Masjid Wali Muhammad has been in this community, it seems like, forever. I was explaining to the Imam riding through here that when they had the riots, they didn't come this way. They had respect for our community. And they still have respect for our community. And as uh, Brother Naeem said, we got seniority in the community. <laughs> so we're going through a, a rebuilding stage, OK? And not just a rebuilding stage uh, of bricks and mortar, but a rebuilding stage of head and heart and commitment, and commitment to what the pioneers did here and passed on to our noble leader, Imam Warak Dean Muhammad, Rahim Allah Alayhi. So we got a lot of work to do. Allah has left us with a great purpose. And what he has written for us hadn't over, overtaken us yet. So that tells us that we got a lot of work to do. And we got a lot of mending to do. So brothers and sisters, I'm not going to give a goodbye because Imam is going to serve it up. I'm sure he's going to serve it up. You wouldn't be here. Excellent speaker, excellent representative of our late and great leader, Imam Farah Dean Muhammad. I enjoy every time I get a chance to sit with him and hear the knowledge and wisdom that Imam Muhammad imparted on him. And so we welcome him, and we welcome his wife, Sister Amina. That was her, you heard on the Quranic uh, recitation. Excellent recitation, something for us all to work through, for all Arabic students. You know. So, a commentary and update I'm supposed to give. I already gave it, right? Right, I did. So, we're just going to go ahead and condemn it. Okay. Now, no, I got to have Dr. Adela Ali, chairman of Master Wali Muhammad Black Tie Event Committee. Will you please stand or will you would like the mic? Um, I just want to thank everyone for coming. I can't repeat anything. I mean, I, I, will, I will be repeating whatever the man has already said. I just want everybody to know that we do appreciate your support and what he's already said. And all, it's really all of us together. It's not Master Father Muhammad or anything, because we know that no matter where you go, you And so we just are the keepers of our home from where we all started. And we, so we appreciate your support. And the, the fundraiser we'll be having in March will be so that we can, not to build a community, not to build anything, but to keep our master actually, to keep it with the people of this historic spot. So that everyone can come. You know, where we have uh, people coming from other countries, uh, mm -hmm. other students of other ethnic groups that want to come in and see where it all started. So we really are keepers of a very, a very <coughs> historic monument. I call it a monument. And so that's what we want to do. And we, this represents the whole community of us. 
no matter where we may be in the world, that actually all started right here in Ashley Water Time. So we want to do what we can to keep the bus so we thank you for helping us keep it afloat because whenever you attend these affairs, you will uh, allow us to be able to have a big fundraiser that was just uh, last weekend. Uh, we were able to have uh, two furnaces replaced because they were, had gone bad. And you know, everything like that is very expensive, but we had so many things that need to be done. I don't know how many, how many of you may notice that uh, we do have a new paint job in here, and that's because I uh, believe that the supporters have a, make sure we have the uh, money to be able to hire painters to do this work for us. You know, we not as, I didn't know if that was a mix me to be quiet. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so I just want to say well, we thank you so, so, so very much. And um, we appreciate these meetings. And we don't intend for them to stop. But we just going to call so we get ready for March 26th. Because we really have a very big affair plan. And we want everyone to come out and enjoy it. And uh, if you can, if you will, as you pass by the table, at the door we have, um, we have our application forms, our ads. So we would like for you to uh, pick up an ad form and please uh, support us. Uh, whether you can come to the uh, banquet or not. Tickets are $100 a piece. I encourage everyone to try to get nine other people to come with them so that they can uh, spread and save $10 a piece. Because so the table will just be $900. So we appreciate the support again. And uh, uh, Thank you again for, for coming, and Brother Lynn, let me just take over the call. Thank you, Sister Dr. Della Lynn. Pack beer. Pack beer. Pack beer. Yes, we appreciate you and all of the workers that work tirelessly to uh, keep historic Master Wadi Muhammad afloat. That's very important. Uh, this is the wound that that. that that, that uh, born all of us, wherever we are, okay? And we have that distinct identity worldwide, you know? And people try to claim our, our identity, you know? But you can't take that from historic master Wali Muhammad. Yeah, yes. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker tonight,
<laughs> to try to recite in public. You know, that, that's in you know, a lot of different countries. In fact, one of the greatest singers, Um Kapun, out of Egypt, who passed years now, she was one of the most beautiful reciters, but they wouldn't let her recite. So she ended up being a nightclub singer. Yeah, Um Kapun, look, check it out. You know. Uh, but he met Muhammad, he said to me, he said, no, he said, we, he said, we publish it. We want our sister to learn the Quran. He said to me, he said, Hassan, do you know, once our sisters begin to recite the Quran, he said, they can stop saying another Bible to the children. He can sing or recite the Quran. And I, I just received uh, an email the other day. <laughs> where a two-year-old girl is correcting her father in the night. Wow. He's reciting our Rahman. I got it on, on my phone, if you want to see it. I was showing it to the secretary today, you know, because she had a daughter up there, and we were talking about the future of our community. I said, it's in these children. You'd be surprised at what our Lord has already put in. But this is a two-year-old, and he's reciting our Rahman. And when he makes a mistake, she corrects him right there. <laughs> and she, we make another, another mistake, and she corrects him, she corrects him, she corrects him. I said, this is a miracle. It is a miracle. So sisters and brothers, you know, there's a lot of brothers that enjoy uh, our new investigation. But it's a lot of sisters that begin to recite the crime around us. So inshallah, we can hear from sister Irene. And I'll call her many times a week.
and Louis Brown, the whole, the whole thing. But do you know, you remember what he said to me once, he said, Kasa, he said, Allah has blessed the African American people with the spirit to carry the car. All we need is the technical knowledge. And I'm seeing evidence of that every day, all the time. And I've always got my telescope and binoculars out looking for that talent in our community, in us. It's there, not just from its recitation, because they call you soul people anyway. <laughs> and what better soul to express than the soul that our Lord gives from the heart? So it's coming, it's coming. The insight, the intellect, etc. Not just recitation, but its application. As I said earlier today in the workshop, that we don't need overseers from overseas. <laughs> no, not that, not, not, not that uh, 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 they can't help, but we need nobody overseeing us when Allah is the all seer. He's al and I don't want to start on the I mean, every time I hear the cook, I mean the Quran, I just want to talk. I want to teach. Let me tell you something. This book has so much inspiration in it that it will turn the soul that's been snoring and sleeping all with each other. It will wake us up and we will be great. So we appreciate you and uh, I'm glad to be here again. And uh, inshallah, I'll be back in March. Even if you don't need water, I make sure I make sure this date is clear on my calendar. <laughs> this is historic Messi Wahali Muhammad and Imam Muhammad said we need to begin where we start. This is where we start. And we're gonna start with unity. We're gonna start with strength. We're gonna start with fortitude. We're gonna start with what God put into us in our soul. And we're going to answer the call of Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Nat Turner, yes. Sojourner Truth, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm, every pioneer that has gone before us, we are not going to let them
rapid instruction book and a huge collection of CD and DVD lectures to aid and assist others in studying and learning more about the religion, religion of Al-Islam. Imam Ahmed has traveled extensively. Can I have your attention, please? Brothers and sisters, let's, let's, let's honor our guests. Imam Ahmed has traveled also, he's traveled to the holy city of Mecca, Saudi Arabia, to perform the Hajj ritual. Some of the other countries he has traveled to include China, Japan, Indonesia, Africa, Canada, Honduras, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Bermuda. On April 27th, 2009, he was invited to perform the opening prayer for the House of Representatives in Tallahassee, Florida. Making it an historic event, Imam Ahmed's 40 years, 40 plus years, as an Islamic leader provides him with the experience initiative and direction that make him most welcome wherever he travels to teach. He currently resides in Houston, Texas and continues to travel across the country to share the jewels of the Quran, the life of Muhammad, the prophet, and the insights and teachings of Imam W.D. Muhammad. And brothers and sisters, can I have your undivided attention for our guest tonight, Imam Qasim Ahmed. Ahmed. Takbir. Takbir. Takbir.
this evening is that I want to be free. I want to be free to serve my Lord. I'm tired of slavery in any form if it's not for our life. We say in Islam all the time, in the most unified chapter in the Quran, that every Muslim must recite Al Fatiha. That's what unites us. Al Fatiha unites us, and their then unites us. Anywhere you go in the world, if their van is called, it's the same way. Anywhere you go in the world, if the Quran is recited, Al Fatiha is recited before you recite the Quran. Anyway, I don't care what country, what language they speak in the chat, they will recite Al Fatiha unified. And their van is called unified. If we will study their van, and study El Fadi House, I guarantee you will bring the unity that we need. Why are you starting off with unity? Because I'm still on this unity tour. I'll be over for the next year or more, as long as Allah lets me live until we see some serious. But I was talking with Imam Rashad, Shaheed Rashad earlier. And uh, he asked me about. A, a topic I was going to teach you. I said, well, I'm really not sure. I said, what would you like for me to teach you? He said, that would seem to have that back. You are a free man of the city. I said, I like that. Mm -hmm. Then I began to think. Well, see, once you, once you are a student of Quran, a student of Muhammad the Prophet, so Allah is in and a student of Imam W. Muhammad, certain systems take place in your home. <coughs> and I began to think on freedom from the time we finished it today, and many of you, I'm sorry, I am so sorry you missed it. It was great. Mm -hmm. But like I told them, I said, if five would show up, I would teach like this five times. And I did, I'm going to that straight you all up. I want to read from you from the Quran on freedom. And this is from Surah to Hashi. This is the 59th chapter of the Quran. And it's the uh, uh, 16th verse. 59 and 16, I believe it is. Surah to Hashi. The gathering. And uh, this particular verse came to mind because of what it said. And, 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 and uh, today we talked on, in the workshop, we talked on uh, the devil, the devil, and his role in working against us. The old saying that an empty mind is the devil's workshop. His workshop. And also, we dealt with the Arabic terminology. Rexy Kesselan Deju Shaitani, the Arabic proverb, that the, the head of the lazy mind is the house of the devil. And there's a saying in English, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. There's idle, I-D-L-E, and idle, I-D-O-L. Both of them are sound the same. Idle, idle an ideal, because ideal about worship, if it's idolatrous, it's going to stagnate you. And idle, I-D-L-E, you know, it's just like your car, idle. 
Yeah. You sitting in there <laughs> in window place, <laughs> waiting and everything. Well, sometimes when we get on, when we are idling like a people, you have to see why you can't drive. You know, my mother said once, he said, you know, sometimes when you're driving and you come to a stop or an impasse and you can't go forward, put it in reverse and back up. He said, that's why they put reverse in the car. <laughs> we have been moving a long time in this country since the Arbalite Muhammad, since Farah Muhammad, Arbalite Muhammad. And we were going to want to test it. Now we're sitting idle, mm -hmm. just sitting in the car, waiting. Ain't going no place, you know, just waiting. And people picking up everything that you work for. Taking credit for this and taking credit for that. Oh, we did this, we did this. And they went hiding. These people went hiding. Now all of a sudden, I, <laughs> I told him, man, I'm going to run my mind I said, what do you mean? You know, I said, the internet, there's been a lot of messages in this country. He said, I know. I know. They're doing them for us. Mm -hmm. Wow. He said, he said, you will be leaving no messages. So, my wife says to me, she said, when I listen to Obama, when he get everybody out of here, I start thinking about what Imam Muhammad said. That all these messages will be left for y'all. Mm. <laughs> well, we hope they don't happen like that, but. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and it's sure ain't gonna happen if you ain't prepared to leave. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. You can't believe a prayer, you can't believe voodoo, you can't believe anything. You just wait and idle. <laughs> My wife, I mean, this here, she said, well, I hope you don't work the people tonight. What are you talking about? What are you doing? It's kind of hard to do. I said, I thought it was excellent talk. Now, let me tell y'all something. I, mean, I got to be very truthful with you. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I will come to you. And I will not pick up one note. I write a note and I won't even use it. So I already know what I want to put on me, I'm going to give it. And I can't question God for shot tell him that. I ain't going to question God. Just like right now. I'm not questioning what I need to tell you tonight. And I want to say, speak to them about freedom. But take it this way. And let me give you this, 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 this idea here. It says, come to the Ladina. Kamekele Shaitani. It is called a little Imani. Up for it. Did I say Imani? Yeah, yeah. Kamekele, this is Arabic here. I can't even read this. I don't read it. Kamekele Shaitani. It's called a little insani. Up for it. فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين. And it's translated this way. Well, I'm going to give you the quick explanation of uh, uh, the way you said that. It's not as clear as that. Yeah, we get this point from. Because he's saying the allies deceived him. Like the evil one when he said it. It's okay. But the method is shaped on, and the likeness of the devil is this. When he says to the human being, Ukhbor. Now, this word Ukhbor is from Kapara. Kapara means to reject God, disbelieve him. This is where the word Kapara comes from. But this Ukhbor is the only command in the Quran that Satan gives. And that is to reject God and disbelieve in him. And when the human being listens to him and rejects God, what does he say? This is what Satan said. Falamna kapara. Then when he rejects God, Falamna kapara. Satan said, call that. 
See, those other, uh, uh, those other idols that was in the house, they had to pay to be there. They had to pay rent from the tribe that they know they couldn't. So the tribe, when they bring the money, they collected the money and count the money up. That's why they negotiate with proper money. Look, look, Muhammad, look. Now you know you're upset. The economic flow. They ain't there like this. Right? You know, you're upset. Now what we will do, we'll give you the keys to the car. We'll give you our family first. We will make you no more known. Just stop the buying thing. Stop breaking up the family association. Yes, you know. In other words, stop messing with the money, man. <laughs> Papa told me you could put the sun in my right yeah. and the moon in my left, but I will never stop teaching what God said. So the next meeting in here, we got a kid. We got a kid here. Yeah. 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 That was the plot. Kill him now. Because he would not cooperate and he messing with, with the finances. Now, I have to give this to you in a practical sense without a whole lot of ritualistic language and superstitions, you know, to make you not connected with it. I'd like to talk to you in a real way if you really want to be free. So here's the, 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 the real freedom now that Satan claims he's free from you with because he invited you by command to reject God. To reject what he gave you. What did I not give you? Everything you got. The head on your body that you won't use. God gave it to you. The heart that you got that became cold and callous toward each other, Allah gave it to you. So Allah sits in the crime. And we need to know in the middle of writing, when you keep moving out to that, when this man was up in the home, you would be cool. Those who believe in the middle of writing, the unseen, when you keep moving out to that, and establish devotional obedience, which is called Salat prayer, well, men that are not the home you go, and they spend from what Allah has provided. Now, this same word, well, men that are not the home you and the people, you and the people, they spend it. But out of the same word comes Munadikun, which is a hypocrite. Yapaka is his root word. Munadik, a Munadik is a hypocrite. Wow. How can this be connected with spending? Because whenever you don't spend on what Allah provided for you in the name of Allah, you become a hypocrite to your own self. You work against your own being, your own existence as a human being. See, when you study the language of Arabic, you see Muslim which comes from the root word Salima. And you see Munafik, which comes from the root word And the meaning that goes on the front means that it's called uh, an active partisan in Munafik. Active partisan. Now that sounds fancy, though. Active partisan. But take partisan or say participant. Now you see better now, don't you? Yeah. An active participant. You see? What it means is that the nature of the act, you become an active participant of that act. So you become active as a Muslim. Muslim one, and you have what is called Muslim act. Muslim act is passive part participant. Meaning that you hear, but you're passive. Meaning you hear. Using the message, but you don't help pay the light bill, the water bill, you make boots, you make boots. You don't pay no water bill. You don't paint nothing. You don't sweep nothing. You just here doing some things. So you are a Muslim, Muslim act, a passive act. Passive act. Passive act. You are a Muslim, Muslim act, a passive participant. You're not active. Why am I 
why am I putting this out here? Because there's no mean that you put on gaffers. So you don't contain rejection. It has to come to you to do it. But you can contain hypocrisy in your own existence. Man, are you calling Jim Christian? No, I'm not calling you anything. I'm telling you what the language of Arabic is saying with you understand it. And they mean it will be new the Bill of Rights. Those who believe and trust and is loyal to the Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights means they translate it as unseen, but it also means that that is abstract, invisible, that that you came to see with the sense body that you have. Bill of so I mean, you trust Allah in everything. And by trusting him, why you keep him not to that? You know what I said? He said, and establish for anything, you got to have the five prayers. That's true, you too. But if you don't understand the ritual of the prayer, you just moving up and down. If you don't understand what you're saying, you just long black mother. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to tell you, you have the brains to learn everything in this book. You got the brains to learn the Arabic of the Quran, and when you pray, you will know what you're saying. Not just going through a law of black woman. And if you're married to a long sword, you know too long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I already know, I heard this stuff. <laughs> Ooh, why are you doing them long swords? <laughs> I don't understand what you said. What well, I mean, she's going to talk to me later on. I'm going to tell her, I'm going to whoop you, don't you? <laughs> Look, I want to be free. That's what I started out with. I want to be free. I am free. I'm a free man in the city. Now, let's go to what we were talking about. لا أقصي من هذا الباب وأنت هلو جهاز الباب ووالد ولا ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد. Let's start right now. I do call the witness and they translate it as this city. Ballot not only means city but it means land. The word for city is Medina. Ballot means land or town. I do call to witness this land. What enter Hindu? What enter Hindu? We have that is valid. And you are free men. That's how you translate it. Hindu means to be untied. To untie something. What enter Hindu? We have that is valid. You are untied to what? What is promoted in this city as worship to God. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never participated in any type of debauchery, corruption, idolatry, or anything. He never worshipped any of those gods. He, he never was cruel. He was always kind. His, his history as a human was impeccable. He was an excellent human being. Prophet Muhammad. Study the scripture. Even his enemies said that about him. When his enemies uh, the ones that became his enemies and things, when they went on long trips, he was their man. They left their clues to him because they knew what? Muhammad was what? Honest, decent. And he wouldn't touch them, even if he was hungry, he wouldn't get a, a, a quarter out of there and go buy a candy bar. <laughs> what am I pointing out to you? That the nature that he lived. As a human being, Allah blessed that nature with the revelation of the Quran to call other people back. So now, what is the Hindu behind that valley? Well, why did he do one man valley? And he translated that, and the mystic ties with the parent and child. But what he's dealing with is that the tribal life that they had there, that they, you know, they had tried to tie to you know, you that doesn't tie you to them. You're not tied to them. And valid, Valid not only means land, city, but you know if I say to you, Hal Entabuid, Hal Entabuid, another translation of it means, it means, are you stupid? <laughs> Out of the same words comes stupid, idiotic. And what made them stupid, what was in the house, and what was in the 
the house? Huh? Hey! How many? Three, six, and a four. And it made the people stoop about who? God. You see, you see, can you see what I'm trying to get you to see now? That our stupidity, our slavery, and our encagement, and our slave habits of not liking one another and still fighting with one another 500 years later right. is because we have remained stupid about our worship to God. And now we're depending on other people who are acting more stupid than you <laughs> to teach you about your religion. I can't find, a, you might find some now, but they, they being brainwashed. But I, you know, you can't, you can't pay me to strap up with a bum and blow myself up. I don't care how much I suffer. I told some immigrants that one time. I said, let me tell you something. You suffer more than any people. And you ain't gonna find African American Negro blowing <laughs> themselves up. <laughs> Law, the book of Allah and my 